Welcome to Gen Z's Battery Class 101, Part 2. I'll be your host, Zach Zimmerman. Today, we'll be covering battery charging. We won't be able to go over a comprehensive review of everything behind chargers because that would make this video way too long. I will, however, hit some basic concepts to help you guys along. First, when charging your battery, ensure that your charger and battery are compatible. There are four types of battery chemistries used in the RC hobby industry. These different battery chemistries are NIMH, Nickel Metal Hydrid, LIFE, that's L-I-F-E, and Lithium Iron Phosphate, Standard LiPo, Lithium Ion Palmer, and Lithium High Voltage. Please note, not every charger is able to charge all four types, so double check what chemistry your charger can take before connecting your battery to the charger. This charger right here is the Genzase iMars 3 charger, and I'll be using it today to demonstrate some key points. You can find the link here, but mainly in the description below, or usually is. The IMRs can take all four chemistries. You can find this out on your charger by either going to the manufacturer's website, reading the user manual, or clicking through the settings. After you ensure that the charger and battery are compatible, the next step in the charging process is to plug in the battery leads, like this, along with the balance connector, also like this. Please also make sure that your charger you bought has the compatible connectors to the battery you are charging. We'll now go into the three basic settings that should be available on every charger. The first setting makes sure that the charger is set to the correct chemistry. If your battery is a nickel metal hydrogen battery, some chargers may not have any more settings. So just start the charger and you're good to move on. But some of them may request you to select the cell count. Ensure you select the correct one based on the battery you have. The second setting will ask you what amperage you should charge your battery at. The answer is 1C, more or less if it's not specifically stated by the manufacturer. 1C equates to the battery capacity and it should take about one hour to charge. The charging time is related to the remaining power of your battery. If the remaining power is 0%, it will take at least an hour and a half. I mean, just balancing a battery can take 10 to 20 minutes depending on the charger. An example of 1C is a 5,000 milliamp per hour battery. It should be charged at five amps. Pretty simple, right? But let's say you want to charge your battery by 2C or more. What'll happen? Well, you get a fewer number of cycles, and the higher the C-rate charging, the lower the number of cycles you can get out of your battery. So what does this mean? One cycle life is a full discharge and charge cycle, and cycle life means charge-discharge cycles. You discharge the battery and you charge it up, it means one cycle. The longer cycle you put on the battery, the less capacity can be recovered. For the first 100 cycles, it is almost unnoticeable. For example, if your battery is marked at 5,000 capacity, you may only get 4,900 capacity recovered. Like your cell phone, it can work two days with no problem, but two years later, you may need to charge your phone every day or half day. That is because you already put several hundreds of cycles on it and the battery is dying. The battery won't die immediately after reaching some number of cycles, you just get less runtime out of it. Normally when the manufacturer stated 300 cycles, it means after 300 cycles, the recoverable capacity should be more than 80% of the normal capacity. There's a reason why we always recommend that you charge by 1C or less. Yes, it takes longer, but if you use your battery properly without overcharging, over discharging or high temperature environments, and if you take care of your battery well, you can get over 300 cycles easily. The third setting involves the inputting the maximum voltage. To do this, check your battery's configuration. Most batteries are listed as dash S dash P. It'll be above me. S stands for series and P stands for parallel. Easy to remember, they're on each side of me. Also, here's a small chart to break down different chemistry voltages. I'll have it right here and you can take all this information however you want. I recommend a screen grab. Once these three settings are adjusted and selected, you'll be ready to start your charger and be less than an hour away from having a total blast. But remember, when charging, Never charge a warm or hot battery. Wait for it to cool down first. Never charge near flammable objects. Charge in an open and clean space, kind of like an empty garage, that type of thing. Never charge your batteries without supervising them in case anything happens. They can get too hot and, well, you gotta watch out for that. Now, again, if you don't follow along with these tips, you can get something like this. I mean, 
Maybe not that bad. But you, you know what I mean. Um, anyways, thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed the second episode of Battery 101. I hope you took away something from it. As always, please give us that like, that comment, that subscribe. Hit us up on the YouTube. Um, let us know if this helped out at all. Uh, anybody else had some tips that I might have glossed over or want to go into detail? Drop them in the comments below. We're all here to help each other. Uh, and so, again, my name is Zach. Thank you for stopping by Battery 101, and we'll see you next time.